The songwriter says, Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is a shadow of turning with thee. All that I have, thy great hand hath provided, as thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. And in the chorus part, of course, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, to me. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy great hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, unto me. What a beautiful song. And beloved, I want to welcome you. I want to greet you in the precious and wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We have the opportunity yet again to come and sit around the Word of God and just to come and share what He laid upon my heart for us to hear in this day. And I do hope and trust that it will simply just come and bless your heart as in the same way that it blesses my heart. Before we're going to continue, I want us just to become silent. We're going to pray and thank the Lord for this moment that He gave unto us just to share from His Word. Shall we now approach His throne of grace and mercy and talk to the Lord? Heavenly Father, thank You so much for this great opportunity we have yet once again. Thank You, Lord, that You are so special unto us. But above and beyond that, thank you that we are special to you too. Thank you that we may come now, Lord, and come and ask you that you will bless us, that you will bless your word upon our hearts. And once this broadcast, Lord, has come to an end, that we may truly and honestly say unto you, you are great and doeth wondrous things. Thou art God alone. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. And I will bless thee, O Lord my God, forevermore. Bless us now, Lord, as we will embark on this journey today, sharing your word. Thank you that you have spared our lives and that you have brought us to this point where we can and may listen to your word. We honour you, Jesus. We ask these things not because we deserve it, but in your precious and beautiful name. Amen. What an opportunity do you and I have just to share with God's word again. Beloved, would you be so kind as to turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11. We did some time back also share on Hebrews 11, but I want to talk to you today on the title of my message, Live with the End in Mind. Live with the End in Mind. Will you join with me reading the Word of God? Taking our scripture reading from the Amplified Study Bible is custom to us and you know and now I love just to use this specific translation. Hebrews 11 from verse 32, the word of God comes to our heart. And what more shall I say? A question asked. For time will fail me if I tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who by faith, that is, with an enduring trust in God and his promises, subdued kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promised blessings, closed the mouths of lions, extinguished the power of raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became mighty and unbeatable in battle, putting enemy forces to flight. 
Women received back their dead by resurrection, and others were tortured to death, refusing to accept release offered on the condition of denying their faith, so that they would be resurrected to a better life, and others experienced the, the trial of mucking and scourging amid torture and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death, they were sawn in two, they were lured with tempting offers to renounce their faith, they were put to death by the sword, they went about wrapped in the skins of sheep and goats, utterly destitute, oppressed, cruel, treated, treated. People of whom the world was not worthy, wandering in deserts and mountains and living in caves and holes in the ground. And all of these, though they gained divine approval through their faith, did not receive the fulfillment of what was promised because God has us in mind and had something better for us so that they, these men and women of authentic faith, would not be made perfect, that is completed in him, apart from us. May God come and bless his word upon our hearts today. Live with the end in mind. Death makes us uncomfortable in our society. And so many times as a pastor, I have often watched individuals, old and young, squirm and shift during funeral services. Whether it made them uncomfortable, I am not sure of. We pray our respects, we pay our respects and offer our condolences. Rarely do we examine the hearts. For, you see, for the Christian, the end is not death. The end is often the culmination of lifetime pursuit of intimacy with God. And beloved, let me tell you today that death becomes the doorway into the unfiltered presence of God. Living with that end in mind. We as Christians daily exercise faith in an unseen, almighty and awesome God. You see, and the writer, the author of Hebrews is expanding what he previously taught us in verse 6. And you can go back there and go read what it is. Now, Without faith, it is impossible, Hebrews 11, verse 6 says. Now with faith, it is impossible to please God. For the one who draws near to him must believe that he exists and rewards those who seek him. Live with the end in mind. You see, what role does faith play in a life lived with the end in mind. One can easily go off track and we can talk about faith, which is not what is on the table today, but without that, certain things are simply just not possible. And this is why I want to come to you today and talk to you a little bit on this, to live with the end in mind. There are so many people who are so reluctant and they just move on and they just live their lives to such a fashion that there is no life after death. God does not exist because they don't believe. But you see verses 32 to 35a, we see God and we, we must have faith to see God who can do anything. And if we... Do not see that. If we cannot grasp that, we will definitely not 
live with the end in mind. We will come from a different perspective. We will see things differently. We will experience him differently. So, what more is there that we can say? Time is far too short, uh, beloved, for us to share again on Gideon Barak and Samson, Yifta and David and Samuel and the prophets who by faith, as we have already heard, conquered kingdoms, administered justice and obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions in the case of David, quenched the raging of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, gained strength after being weak, became mighty in battle and put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Those are things that we have read of, and those are things that we've learned about. But you see, for the one who draws near to him, that one must believe that he exists. In other words, that God exists. And if you and I live with the end in mind, what awaits us after this life on earth? Beloved, it brings to one that that comfort. It is as if the mind and the heart is soothed with this assurance that because Jesus is alive, because what will happen at the end is going to be a reality. Therefore, the writer of the Hebrew book come and he says, time is too short for me when he thinks of all the stories not being told about men and women of faith. He can't get it all in. So although every name is not mentioned, it is clear that every name is important. Being by naming just four men from the period of Judges, the writer only mentions one king, which is David. Samuel is mentioned with the prophets. And thereafter, the writer describes only the experiences of faithful followers of God. For us to believe, for us to have that faith, for us to be able to live with the end in mind simply means that faith sees a God who can do anything. Faith sees God to such an extent, beloved, that we can and we will hold on to that forever, knowing that it, it's the very faith that will see us through. Initially, the examples used are triumphant and the tone and the scope. God acts through the faith of his people. And this is what the Hebrew writer, the author, describes dramatically. The experiences of deliverance, empowerment and miracles. No authority is too great. No force is too powerful. No army is too large. God can do it. That's what they believe. And what is it that you and I believe in today? The question today is, do we live with the end in mind? Knowing what God promised is going to happen. It's going to take place. It's going to come. Do you and I have that absolute per persuasion that, and knowledge and the assurance that our faith in Him is secure. Our faith in Him is steadfast because He is a great God. I just recall my own dad and my mom's faith that they had in God. Irrespective of the sorrow, irrespective of things they went through, things they have experienced, they still kept on believing because they lived having the end in mind. They knew, doesn't matter what comes and what will come, we will see each other again. And that is what I firmly believe today. And that makes me feel so excited, knowing that when it comes, we will be there forever. forever. Yes, confronted with overwhelming odds and and. and 
They will ask, but what about God? He is always included in their thinking because they are living with the end in mind. More specifically, the examples illustrate how God can work. I have seen so many miracles. I have seen so many healings in my parents' ministry. And I thank God that I could grow up with that. It just made me growing stronger. You see, it made me understanding that this great God, came through for me. He is in me, for me. And that makes it so all the more important to hold on to this faith. To have what? To have the end in mind. To live having the end in mind. What is in your mind today, beloved? What do you think of? How do you live? Is it only for today? Is it only for the part? Lord, it's just here now and for what should happen. I cannot move on and there is nothing to look forward to because the things look so doomy and gloomy. Nothing looks excited and exciting things that can happen because the world is just spiraling downwards. But you see, once you are there, beloved, let me remind you of that. Where faith sees a God who can do anything, you know that he's there. Beautiful song that says, my God can do anything. He can do anything. And this is what I believe today. Through me, in me, for me. And that faith that I have, I'm holding on to him. If we look at verses 35, the B part, up to 38, and and let us just read it and see what the Word of God says. 35, the B part, where he says, refusing to accept release offered on the condition of denying their faith so that they would be resurrected to a better life and others experience the trial of mocking and scourging amid torture and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were lured with tempting offers to renounce their faith. They were put to death by the sword. They went about wrapped in the skins of sheep and goats, utterly destitute, oppressed, cruelly treated. People of whom the world was not worthy, wandering in deserts and mountains, living in caves and holes in the ground. You see Faith, faith wants God more than anything. If I have that faith, if I have that in mind, if I live with the end in mind, I want God. I want to be with God. They have lived that. They have accepted that. They went along with whatever happened in their lives. And today people cannot struggle. People, when they struggle and things doesn't seem to go their way, this is when they start to murmur and to complain. But you see, faith wants God more than anything. Do you want Him more than anything? Well, then I'm here today to come and tell you, live with the end in mind because of all the promises that will come because of everything God promised in his word that will take place. Oh, beloved, you see, some men, some men were tortured, not accepting release so that they might gain a better resurrection and others experienced mockings and scourgings as well as bonds and imprisonment. Will you and I go to jail today? Will we go to prison for the sake of Jesus? Because we live having what? The end in mind. I know what awaits me. The greater picture, the bigger picture is that eternity with him. Therefore, John 14 says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a place. And when it's done, I will come and I will fetch you to take you to be with me. I will not leave you as orphans. You will not be alone because the spirit of truth, the advocate, the Holy Spirit will be there to show you, to teach you and learn you the way that you should and ought to go. Stephen stoned to death. 
others simply just sawn in two. They died by the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, afflicted, and mistreated. John the Baptist eating honey and locusts. If we read what the Bible teaches us about him, but yet still a man who was beheaded because he dared to speak out to a king who was living unfaithfully with someone else's, as a matter of fact, his brother's wife. And when reprimanded about it, it didn't gel to good with the king. And then he was beheaded. He lost his head because of that. Will you and I? I'm here today again to come and just encourage you. Listen, my brother, my sister, live with the end in mind. And all these things which is behind us, all these things that are looming and that's there and that sometimes causes us to feel, Lord, we're going we're gonna to fall, we will be able to stand. I'm going to lose my wits, Lord. I'm going to lose my sanity because things are too much. I want to tell you, if you have living with the end in mind, I want to tell you everything will be good. Living for Jesus. Oh, I want to tell you, there's nothing else. There's nothing else. I want to tell you, all of those men and women who died because they lived having the end in mind, the world was not worthy of any of them. The world is not worthy of us because of our faith, beloved. They wandered in deserts, mountains, caves, and holes in the ground. You and I today, are we? Are we there? I don't think so, beloved. But I want to encourage you. Live. Live having the end in mind. Continuously, constantly. What? A change, but you see Hebrews 11 verse 6, the C part says, For the one who draws near to him must believe that he rewards those who seek him. Live with the end in mind. What a change. There will be a reward. You see, the believer is likely to experience trials as he is triumph. And this passage files in the face of preachers of wealth and health. The writer of Hebrews describes the people completely rejected by their age. They are forced to redefine what it means to be safe and securing the love of God. It doesn't always mean deliverance from difficulty. And I'm sorry to say that. But I don't think not only preachers, but children of God are living, having the end in mind. It's all about my pocket. It's all where I can gain and what I can gain from. Yes, we are straight to the point today again, beloved. What did the church become? A place where we judge. A place where we offer what the world offers. In the same fashion they do it. Are we there where we are preaching things that does not being been described in God's word? Taking the word of God and just belittling it, bringing it down to a level where people cannot stand in for it because they want to gain from it. It's a challenge I'm putting to you today again, beloved. Live with the end in mind. There's nothing you and I can take with us. There's nothing that can secure our eternal life except for the fact that Jesus died on the cross and his blood saved us. His blood bought us. That was the ransom, a life, an innocent life, innocent, holy, precious blood that was shed for you and me. 
And yet people find it hard still to be able to live having the end in mind. Yeah. You see. How, how can they endure such incredible suffering? Lord, how did they make it? How did they do it? Because they are living with the end in mind. And that's how my dad and my mom lived. Irrespective of, are you, are you, beloved, living with the end in mind? Jesus is coming. I cannot, if I could and I have my way, I will just simply with each and every broadcast, I will remind you, Jesus is coming. Whether English or Afrikaans doesn't matter. Jesus is coming, beloved. And he's coming soon. Oh, you see, those men and women, they placed more value on pleasing God than they do on taking care of themselves and on this side of eternity. You see, they were looking for a homeland. Oh, they were looking for a heaven. They were looking for a place. Of which the songwriter says how beautiful heaven must be. Sweet home of the happy and free. Fair haven. Fair haven of rest for the weary. How beautiful heaven must be. They were looking for that homeland. What are you looking for? I am looking forward for a city that God is built, busy building. And it's not done yet because Jesus didn't come as yet. And the Father will tell the Son when to come. And I believe personally it's not far. Looking at everything happening around us, I know that it's about to take place. Are you ready for that? That's why I want to urge you today, live with the mind, with the end in mind. Live with that where you will end up when Jesus Christ will come on the clouds of glory. Oh, and how I'm longing for that day, for Jesus to come back. I long to see his blessed face when all the saints throughout all ages will be gathered home up there where the angels shout and sing. Isn't this lovely? Isn't this beautiful? Oh, I want to tell you today, like Paul, they would rather be in the presence of Christ than here. I don't think they would, have, would like to swap places with us. But at a place, someplace in the word of God, Paul says, it's for your sake that I'm still here. But how I long to be with him. How I long just to be there to have this encountering with him in person, knowing that there will be no more trouble, no more sorrow, no more tears, no more death, no more sickness or pain. Oh, I want to tell you, Jesus instructs his followers to seek first his kingdom. Matthew, read it. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added. There will be additions. There will be rewards. And I cannot wait for that so that you and I can be there. You see, seek his kingdom first. And as a result, they are looked down upon and abused by the world because they seek the kingdom of God first. <laughs> but God's value on their lives is so great that the writer can say the world was not worthy of them. Neither is the world worthy of us. Are you willing to suffer? Are you willing to suffer for Christ? Are you willing to live to such an extent that you have the end in mind? Doesn't matter what they do to you. Doesn't matter how they harm this body. One thing I know, you can harm this body, but I know there's one who's alive. I know there's one who loves me more than anything. 
Do you love Jesus more than anything? Oh, as a promise-driven person, I should want God more than personal survival, more than personal happiness. Faith delights God more than anything. Shall we read verses 39 to 40? He says, and all of these, though they gained divine approval through their faith, did not receive the fulfillment of what was promised. That city, that homeland, because God had us in mind. Live with the end in mind. God had us in mind and had something better for us so that they, these men and women of authentic faith, would not be made perfect. That is complete in him apart from us. Praise God. We are going to be made complete perfect when everybody will be with him I, I really I'm urging you live having the end in mind allow that to be the only thing you see <laughs> a proof through their faith literally means they obtained a witness from God he approved he was delighted this indicates that the person who chooses to live a promise-driven life hold, holds God's attention. Read the word. Are you holding God's attention? Uh, you see, the author comes and then he adds that God already has provided something better for us. The something better is the place where God reigns the king, kingdom of God was announced by Jesus and proclaimed by the disciples as they went out. You see, it is a country, it is a city, it is a place. Unlike the world conditions we experience now, it is our destiny and birthright. Praise God. I love this. Live having the end in mind. You see, you and I, as the child of God, can say, He always sees me and He already has a place for me. Isn't this great? So I want to encourage you. Don't look at the things of this world. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. And we are encountering a lot of things. People do mock us. People do ridicule. People will come and they will make jokes and make fun of us because we believe in Jesus Christ, because we believe going to church and going to the place of worship. They, they don't understand it. Because they do not have the end in mind. They live reluctant lives. They don't care what happens to them. I do care. I do care what happened to me and I do care what happened to you. That's why I feel compelled to come and urge you today. Live. Live. With the end in your mind. Knowing that it's going to come. You see, the promise-driven life was defined by Noah. The dangers of the journey were illustrated by Abraham. The motivation to keep it up was modeled by Moses. Now David and others capture what it means to live with the end in mind. Living by faith is a 24-7 activity. We do not turn it on or off. You hear me? Isn't this great? I will repeat it. Living by faith is a 24-7 activity. You don't just switch it on or off. Now, are we, are we promise driven? The promises that he made, the promises that he, his word 
teaches us about. His promises that his word tells us is the truth. Are you living a promise-driven life? Promise-driven life. Of course, with the end in mind. May I, as we come to an end of this broadcast, beloved, die well when it's your time, knowing that you live with the end in mind. Whether Jesus comes to come and fetch us in the clouds of glory, live well, die well, be changed in the twinkling of an eye, well, having the end in mind. Jesus is coming. May God place his word upon our hearts. I do hope that it will mean something to you today. Remember, death is never strange or fearful. It's not strange because we are dying daily. Have to lay down the I, the me, and because of that, we grow and be strong and become stronger in Him. May I close Hebrews 2, verse 14 to 15. Now since the children have flesh and blood in common, he also shared in these, so that through his death he might destroy the one holding the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who were held in slavery all their lives by the fear of death. We don't have to. Live. Live. Having. Shall we pray? Thank you, Lord, for your word. Bless us. Lord, may this just really speak into the heart, even if it's just one who listened to this broadcast today. Whenever in the week, whenever the time of the day, that doesn't matter. But may it, Lord, encourage them. As men and women of faith, Lord, how they lived, how they looked forward. But Lord, they have not been made completed because of you had us in your mind. Thank you for that, Jesus. Oh, I love you, Lord. I want to serve you with, with all of my breath, all of my strength, all of my heart. Take us through the rest of this day, this week, and be blessed and glorified and honored in and through our lives. In Jesus' name. To that you and I can say, Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the sweet communion, beloved, of the Holy Spirit, be stay and remain with us until Jesus comes again. And to that you and I can say, Amen. Shalom. Be blessed. Stay blessed. And Maranatha. Build a land I am long